All right, welcome back. Right now we are going to continue our hatch series, uh, working on just some beginner things. So if you're a brand new beginner, be it with Scratch or Hatch, you can follow along. If you're in Scratch, uh, you know, you use Scratch and follow along with that. Otherwise, I'm in Hatch right now. Now that you've worked on that, uh, now that you've worked on that project that we did last week, you should have something here. If you didn't, I'd invite you to go back and look at um, last week's dark mode. There's always the uh, segments listed down below, but I'm actually going to continue with the project we had. So if you're not already in Hatch, you can do so by clicking on apps at the top and then clicking Hatch. Then you should see a page like mine. Your projects will be different, but that's okay. Everyone's is. So instead of creating a new project today, we're already in my project. So to use the project you used last week, you can find it in here. I can also see the date. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And you should see the project load here. Um, we're going to go ahead and edit this, but I do want to highlight uh, something really important here. And this is pretty much the difference between Hatch and Scratch, or at least a big one. Uh, it's the ability to control uh, view permissions. So over here, it says view permission. I'm just going to click that. And right now, no one can see my project. If you want to go look uh, within the explore page you would not see it however once i say yes to it being public and i click save you will now be able to see that and if you're following along live you can probably see that right now but if i go back to view permission you'll see the second thing open source code blocks so in scratch if your project is public uh, anybody can remix your code they can see your code um, which is great for collaboration, but sometimes maybe you have a project and you don't want people to see the code. Um, in Hatch, you have the ability to do that. So you can always choose to expose your source code and we see some great collaboration from that, but you can also keep it private. So these options are here. It's good to know from the get-go. I'm gonna click save changes. Also important, if you ever wanted to share this, be it to a challenge, which we have many on OEO class, or just send a link to a friend, you would click share right here, and then you can just copy this link. You don't want to go copying the URL. That's not going to uh, be the link to your project. That's going to be the link for you to edit your project. And unless someone is signed in as you, it's not going to work. All right. Now to uh, put in some walking animations. So I'm going to go to edit code block. And now that I'm in here, I'm going to do what I always like to do. Uh, I'm going to rename this to say walking animation, kind of make this a uh, expanding document, walking animation. And I'll click save and I'll click expand editor to get rid of those toolbars, give myself a little extra room. And I also always like to expand the stage. All right. So now with this setup, if I click the green flag, I should see that my project from last week, Controlled Movements, still works. I can still use the arrow keys and I can navigate around this stage. However, if I was to make a game, be it a maze or a platform or anything like that, it works, but it doesn't look that great. Um, if you look at any game, be it a simple game or a uh, complex one, very often they have at walking animations or at least some kind of movement animation. So we are going to program that right now. So at the end, I might be able to give you a taste of what that can look like with some really good graphics, but for now, we are going to keep it nice and simple. So a walking animation is essentially made by toggling through different costumes that the sprite has. In Hatch, a sprite can have multiple costumes or appearances. That's all they are. It's how the sprite appears. So we are going to add a second sprite from the sprite library. Uh, uh, sorry, a second costume from the costume library. So you can do so by clicking on the costumes tab in the upper left hand corner. And then you can go ahead and hover over the cat icon in the bottom left hand corner, and then you can click it. So in here, I know that uh, there is a second costume for Oyobot. And it's right over here. So Oyobot 1 is the default sprite that's loaded in. So we're going to go ahead and load Oyobot 2 as a second costume. Now, a good alternative, if you want to do something different, is to use Birdfly 1 and 2, because that's going to give you a flapping animation. And it's essentially the same thing. So I'm going to stick with the Oyobot, though. So click there. 
and here's my second animation. Now, if I click between the first and second, you can see that it's kind of a walk, rough walking animation. You can always make this smoother or upload other artwork, but for now, this will suffice. Now that we have our two costumes, we can go to the code tab in the upper left hand corner. And we are going to program the sprite to toggle between its sprite costumes as it moves. Before we do so, though, there's going to be one thing that's going to make this work a lot better, and that is setting the uh, rotation of the sprite. So if I scroll down, I will find a block down here. And it's not rotation, it's rotation style. But it says rotation style left, right. I'm going to go ahead and drag that and put it right underneath the one green flag clicks block. There's a couple of options here, but left, right is exactly what I want. So that is going to let the sprite, instead of uh, just staying where it is or rotating around, it's going to flip left and right so that when we walk left and right, it uh, faces in the direction that it is moving. Um, so we can go ahead and uh, go up and grab this other block here, which is point in direction 90, also in the motion category. All we're going to do is we're going to place this block inside the if statement where we say if right arrow pressed. And we're going to place another one inside the if statement where we have if left arrow pressed. And it can go above or below the change x by blocks. Uh, it doesn't ma matter too much. What does matter, though, is that for the left arrow, you can't leave it at 90. This needs to change to be negative 90. So you can type that in up here, or you can use this uh, kind of watch face. Um, it's not a watch face. You can use this um, circle and uh, get that angle. So negative 90 faces to the left, 90 faces to the right. So now if I click the green flag again and move around, you can see it faces in the direction that it's moving. It doesn't face up and down. We don't have that kind of top-down perspective. We're kind of looking directly at it. But um, this is going to help us out a lot. Right, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And now that we're set up for our walking animation, it's time to actually program it. So I'm going to start out just like I have over here. So that's the one green flag clicked forever and if blocks. This is pretty standard. So I'm going to go to the events category on the left and bring in a when green flag clicked block. I'm going to go to the control category, grab a forever block. And then I'm going to grab an if block right underneath that. Now, if at any point you find you're having a hard time keeping up, it is very difficult to follow a video and work on your computer. You can always pause it, even the live stream. Uh, I believe you can pause it and always follow along and fast forward to where we are within the live stream. So now that we have this, what we want to say is that if we press any of these arrow keys, we should toggle our sprites costumes. So we can do that by going to the operators category on the left screen one, and then we'll find the or block. And I'm going to need three of these. Each one will snap inside the other, which should give me four empty diamond kind of shapes. Now what goes inside those diamond shapes? It is these when key pressed blocks. So I'm actually just going to borrow from here. So I am going to right click to duplicate these. Once again, if you have a trackpad, that's two finger click. So I'm going to right click, duplicate, and I'm going to drag it so that the left side of this block lines up with the left side of the uh, hole. And I'm actually going to work from the right side of this because as I'm just going to put this over here for a second. It expands and then I got to go chasing after it as it expands off the screen. So I'm just going to start over here on the left. I'm going to do that again for left and for up and for down. And now when you move this around, it may be difficult to see, but I am grabbing the largest ore block, the one that has everything inside of it, in order to move everything. I'm just going to line that up with the if block and let it go. I'll make the stage a little smaller just so we can see what we're working on. All right. So from now on, uh, there's very, very little more we need to add. All we need to say is that 
Uh, we need to change the costume, and then we're going to wait a little bit so it's not too uh, jerky. So I'm going to go to the motion category. I am going to grab a... Uh, sorry, not the motion category. The looks category, and I'm going to grab this next costume block here. I'm going to put that in. And we have one more block that we're going to add, but just watch what happens when I run this, and you'll see why we add the next block. It's very jerky. It doesn't look super good. So we're going to slow that down a little bit. So I'm going to go to the control category. I'm going to grab this wait one seconds block. I'm going to put it right underneath the next costume block. Only one second, a little much. Uh, so I'm going to drop that down to 0.1 seconds. And I'm just going to see how that is. You may like it, you may not. You can always edit it from here. But I'll click the green flag again. And I think that's pretty good. One thing, I, so at this point, it looks pretty good. Uh, I might do something later on, like I might say, instead of change X by 10, I'll do change X by 7. And I'll make all these kind of proportional. So 7, negative 7, 7, negative 7. Um, and I might even shrink this right down. So there's this size uh, section right here, and I might do 60. And that way, we just have more space on the stage. You can't make the stage bigger, but you can make everything inside of it smaller. And if you're making a game, you typically want to do that. So now the sprite walks around. It's moving at a pace that kind of matches. It's walking animation, and it looks pretty good. So at this point, uh, that's pretty much a walking animation. So I can save this. Now, if you wanted to start importing some really nice sprites into your games, make them looking great from the get-go with very little code added, you can do so by adding uh, an animated GIF that you can find online. So I think I have that prepared right here. So in uh, an image search, I just typed in walking animation, and I chose Sonic because I think Sonic looks pretty cool. Uh, you can also help yourself out by choosing the type to be animated GIF. And then any GIF that you find... Uh, you can just download that as an image, and when you upload that as a sprite, it will upload each of those um, frames as a separate um, as a separate costume. So watch. I am going to right-click and save this, and you may not see this on my screen, but that's all right. You can do the same. You're just saving it anywhere in your pictures or on your desktop. So I save that, and I'm going to go back to Hatch. And now, in the bottom right-hand corner, I am going to hover over the cat icon and choose Upload a Sprite. I'm going to find that animation I just found, that GIF. And I'm going to drag him over so we can see. And if you go to the costumes, you can see we have each frame of Sonic. Now all we need to do is I'm going to go back to the Oyobot sprite, and I'm going to copy the code from Oyobot into Sonic. And uh, that's going to save me a lot of work. So to copy from code from one sprite to another in Hatch is pretty simple. Um, you just grab, so you have the whole code block, and you're going to hold it, and you're going to move it and drop it on top of the sprite you want to move it to. And you'll notice that the sprite shakes a little bit, and that's how you know it's going to accept. So I do that, let go. And I'm going to do that here. Move that. Let go. Now, I'm just going to hide Oyobot by clicking that. Perfect. And I'll click on Sonic. We see that all this code is here. And if I click the green flag, I think we're going to have a pretty cool walking animation. And it works pretty nicely. It's a little slow. So we can uh, change this. Just say something like 0.01 seconds because there's a lot many more frames to this animation it's much smoother so now we have a really nice walking animation if we even want to shrink this down to something like 40 percent uh we go full screen on this this is going to look really good in a game um, maybe not moving up and down but if you had this as a platformer and you started adding jump animations you could have uh, something really good for your game uh, without adding much code at all. You're just finding something online and uploading it, and it kind of works seamlessly.
So that has been how to add walking animations to your hatch projects. Um, stick around for the other segments we have. I believe uh, Blender is coming up next.